I'm Alex Fanaroff. I'm an interventional cardiologist and assistant professor of medicine at the University of Pennsylvania. So statins are highly effective at preventing uh, cardiovascular events and preventing uh, secondary cardiovascular events in patients that have already had events. Um, but a lot of patients that are supposed to be on statins are not prescribed them. And when you ask primary care providers, uh, give them hypothetical patient scenarios, and you ask them to pick the patients that should be on statins, they get it right most of the time. So it's not, the issue that, about getting patients on statins is not that primary care providers don't know, it's just that they don't really have enough time to take care of uh, all the preventive care needs for their patients in addition to all the acute needs in their, in their clinic visits. And uh, clinical pharmacists can be really helpful at uh, getting patients that should be on statins and other preventive medicines onto, the med onto statins. Uh, but it's hard to know exactly how to operationalize that in clinical practice. So that's, that's what led to this study that we did. So we did two clinical trials here uh, in, in similar patient populations. So that the patient population was patients that were seen in primary care clinics in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, that had an indication for a higher intermediate dose statin, but were not prescribed statins. Um, and so we did, like I said, we did, we did two clinical trials in, in these patient populations. One trial was done at one clinic, and it was a stepped wedge clinical trial of an interruptive EHR alert that showed up in, in physicians' uh, EHRs when they saw a patient that met study criteria. And uh, the clinicians were randomized at the single clinic into one of two groups. In one, uh, the EHR alert came on in months uh, three through nine of the trial, and the other one, it came on just in months six through nine. And we looked at the difference between uh, patients that were seen by clinicians in group one versus group two to see the effect of the interruptive visit-based EHR notification. The second trial was a cluster randomized trial at 10 clinics in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And in this one, uh, the clinics were randomized uh, to either usual care or to identify patients that had an indication for a statin but were not on statins, uh, and to have uh, an appended order for pharmacist consultation placed into the uh, clinician's uh, inbox for signing. And so in both cases, um, when, so, so in that case, when uh, the clinician entered the order or the clinician signed the order for the, uh, for the pharmacy consult, the pharmacist called the patient and talked about getting them onto an appropriate dose statin. Yeah, so in the, in, the, uh, in the cluster randomized trial, sorry, in the step wedge trial of the visit-based intervention, um, we saw that there was about a three to five percentage point increase in the percentage of patients that were prescribed the statin uh, in the intervention arm versus the usual care arm. So a three to five percent increase in, in percentage of patients prescribed to statin appropriately. And then there was about a one to two percentage point increase in the proportion of patients uh, that were prescribed to statin at the appropriate dose. In the uh, cluster randomized trial of the non-visit-based interventions, the one where we just put the orders into the clinician's uh, inbox and had them, had them sign them all, and the pharmacist just called all the patients that were, that were, that were relevant, the intervention, so just putting the order in, increased the proportion of patients prescribed to statin uh, by 16 percentage points um, and increased the proportion of patients prescribed an appropriate dose statin by 17 percentage points. So a much bigger effect um, was sort of uh, the non-visit-based approach or the asynchronous approach of just putting orders into physician's mailbox for them to sign. Yeah, so I think that the, the take-home message is that this asynchronous approach of sort of bypassing clinicians and not putting something else onto their plate uh, is much more effective at getting them to prescribe, at getting uh, prescriptions of, of sort of these medications that are, that are effective uh, at reducing events. And if you sort of look at the implications of a 17 percentage point increase in, in patients prescribed statins, it's, uh, it's fairly significant. So, you know, these, these are patients with about a 17 percent risk of ASCVD events over the next 10 years. Uh, and statins reduce that risk by about 33 percent. So we're reducing, so in patients that are, that are prescribed a statin, um, we're, we're reducing uh, their risk for about 17 percent to 11 percent. Um, so about a, a number needs to treat of about 17. So if we're increasing statin prescriptions by 17 percent by, so for every 100 orders we put in, we're reducing one cardiovascular event over 10 years. So that's, that's a pretty substantial decrease in cardiovascular events. Um, so this is an effective strategy, an adjunct sort of visit-based strategies to, to sort of uh, engage the pharmacist early and, and um, help get patients on medicines that, that they should be prescribed. I think the next steps, you know, this, this was a, it was a 2,000 patient trial. It's, it's fairly significant, but it was really only in, in one health system and, and in, um, in uh, about, about 10, cl in, in 10 clinics. I think the question is whether this can be scaled across multiple health systems, whether this is the sort of thing that, that um, you know, you can do in, in multiple health systems um, and how, how to implement it more broadly. Uh, and I think the other question is, does it have to be a pharmacist that does this? Pharmacist time is, is pretty valuable. Uh, and could we do this with uh, nurses or NPs or sort of patient care navigators? Does, does it have to be pharmacists? And I think those are the questions that we're looking to answer next.
Thank you.